we can apply layer effects onto our text or type inside of Photoshop. We have an example here, outline and a drop shadow. Let's go back to our layers again. And let's come down here. Let's hide that layer. Let's take a look at the one that we're playing with in here, our wind and sail right there. Let's do a little bit of work on this. I'm going to select this. Let's just select the and here first. Let's bring this size down a little bit. Bring it down to maybe 60. There we go. Maybe a little more. Actually, let's make it exact. I think I had this one set at 120. There we go. And this was set at 96. Let me just double check that. 120 and that's a 72. Okay, 72 and 120. So let's hide this again. And I set this one at 72, which is right there. There you go. So that's basically the same as the one that I used. Now to place effects in here, click on your layer and then click on the FX button. This brings up our blending options again. These are the same blending options which we looked at previously in the layer menu. And as you can see here, they're available here as well. So we have all of our blending options available here as well. We'll just play with them over here, a little drop down. First thing I want to do is to put a stroke around our text. Click on stroke and bring that up and kind of see that. Let's change the color here to white. I'll just choose web only colors and click on a nice little white section. There we go. So there's a white stroke around the letters. Looks kind of nice, has a kind of a a surf kind of feel to it. We can adjust the size if I wanted to make it much larger or much smaller, whatever is appropriate for the style that you're going for. A little larger looks, of course, a little freer, a little more modern maybe. A little smaller is a little more subdued. So it depends upon the look that you want. We're going just a little bit smaller on this one. And then let's put a drop shadow on here. Click on drop shadow and there's our little drop shadow. We can adjust the opacity of the drop shadow. We can play at the distance. You can see right there I can actually move it quite a ways out if I wanted to. So find a good distance for the drop shadow. The angle in here will adjust the light and the direction of the light which will control where the drop shadow falls. The spread as you can see, kind of makes the drop shadow larger. Bring it down, makes it a little bit smaller, a little finer. And the size softens it up or makes it very sharp. And I'm going for just a slight softening. Right? I want just a little bit of a hint of a shadow in behind there just to raise the text up off of the page. So all of this stuff, the outline and the drop shadow, all that stuff is done just with these layer styles. Now, some layer styles will not work very well on this type. It's just too thin. And let me pull this up here. I'll hide the stroke for a second. Let's hide that drop shadow for a second. And take a look at the bevel and emboss. You can see it, but it's not really that great. It's not a great style in there. It does a little bit. It's not really a great style. It's really up to you if you want to do that kind of a thing or not. Actually, the drop shadow is not that bad. But the problem with the bevel and emboss is that there's not a lot of space in here to work with that bevel and emboss. It kind of gives us a rounded letter style as opposed to being a nice flat letter style or as having nice beveled edges on something. So for my particular use, I'm going to leave that off and just have the flat letters in there. But all these layer styles will work. We can put an outer glow around these things. Let's hide the stroke for a second. Let's go to the outer glow. And let's increase the size of that. So I could do a little glow instead. Just a little glowing effect in behind the letters like that. Pulls them off of the page a little bit. Inner glow is inside the letters. And it, as you can see, that doesn't work out very well at all because, again, the shapes are real thin. And, of course, satin will work in here. Color overlay will work in here just fine. The gradient overlay will work in here. At a stroke, that's not too bad. I can choose the gradient that I want. Let's look at our gradient list, maybe do a 
blue gradient like that. Here's kind of a chrome thing happening in there. Bring the opacity down just a little bit. And with the chrome effect. So you have all of your gradients available to you as we've played with previously. That's okay, but not great. Pattern overlay again doesn't work out that well. Once again, because the layers are fairly thin, a lot of this stuff works out better with just thicker shapes to work into. Take out that outer glow in there. Not sure if I like that or not, actually, just kind of looking at it. Let's see how that looks on the whole page. We we'll move this over here and let's look at that on the whole page. And the more I think about it, the more I think I actually like that outer glow. So let's go back to our, choose cancel here, or okay. Let's go back to the actual final wind and sail here, our final one. And I'll open up the effects. We have the drop shadow and the stroke in here. Double click where it says effects. That brings back up the effects panel. And let's look at that outer glow again right here. And we'll bring in some of that outer glow effect. Just a little hint of that. Maybe not too much. And we can do a precise glow like this or a softer glow. I think softer is better for this particular use. Choose OK. There we go. We've added just a little bit then into our title up here for our magazine that we're working on. So all of your layer effects will work out just fine on text. You don't have to do anything to your text to apply these layer effects. Just go ahead and drop them right in.